as product development cycles shorten, there are pressures to streamline requirements engineering so that products come to the market more quickly. But the fundamental problems remain the same. Getting timely, accurate, and stable stakeholders input. In this lesson class, I will be presenting the seven distinct task requirements engineering. We have the inception, elicitation, elaboration, negotiation, specification, validation, and lastly, we have the management. It is important to take note that some of these tasks occur in parallel and all are adapted to the needs of the project. The things presented in this lesson are not a foolproof solution to the challenges in requirements engineering, but they can somehow provide a solid approach in addressing these challenges. It is possible that two or more tasks presented here are compressed already when implemented. Let us start with inception. Inception reflects the time when the project is initiated and the rationality of the project needs to be understood. There can be many reasons why the project is proposed. During inception, we would like to, I would, we would like to understand where this rationality is coming from in order to identify the project goals. This task will normally produce the business case, feasibility study, and also the project scope. At the very least, project inception produces the business case and project scope only. These are the realities you will encounter soon. First, customers may be located in different city or country. That's your target market or target audience. Next, customers may only have a vague idea of what is required in the software or None at all. Next, customers have or may have a conflicting requirements. I have I had an experience with that one, and I will explain that one later on. Customers may have limited technical knowledge, or they they are not technically inclined. So, as a software engineer, you also need to educate them. Next, customers may have limited time to work with the software team. Again. Uh, we are not. Uh, we are not. Uh, we are not forcing them to give their time to us if they are busy. Look for their available time. Next and lastly, customers may resist the project. There are some customers like that. Again, all you need to do is to explain. You need to educate the features so that they will not resist the project. Let us be reminded once again, class, of the challenges and requirements gathering in order to allow us to appreciate project inception and its relevant tasks. Let us now discuss some steps in establishing the groundwork for understanding the software requirements. In effect, we simply want to jumpstart requirements gathering right in order to proceed with the rest of the requirements engineering activities. We need to discuss first the first step, which is the identification of stakeholders. A common mistake for new developers is that they rely on management for requirements, especially if they are the sponsors of the project. That is wrong, class. Anyone who directly or indirectly benefits from the system being built is a little too vague in my opinion. Instead, at inception, determine who you want to get input from. For example, we have those uh, we have those positions like business operations managers. You can ask them, or the product managers, marketing people, the internal and external customers, the end users, of course. The consultants, the product engineers, support and maintenance engineers, and others. Each stakeholder has a difference, uh, has a different view of the system, achieves different benefits, and is open to different risks 
if the development effort should fail. Next step, we have recognizing multiple viewpoints. Because many different stakeholders exist, the requirements of the system will be explored from many different points of view. Each of these consultancies will contribute information to the requirements engineering process. As information from multiple viewpoints is collected, emerging requirements may be inconsistent or may conflict with other or maybe conflict with one another. I had an experience before when I gathered data from them. Some employees of that specific de uh, department has different requirements from the other. That's weird and it's really so confusing. So basically, we should categorize all stakeholders' information, including the inconsistency and conflicting requirements in a way that will allow decision makers or the management to choose an internally consistent set of requirements for the system. Also, we have working towards collaboration. When working with different groups that, uh, that have their own ideas and agendas, it is important to work together a common goal and get people to work together on what the actual end goals are going to be. For me, this is also one of the most important things that you need to do as a software engineer. You need to make sure that your team or your software development team has a good communication or has a good collaboration with your stakeholders. I would like to emphasize here that the job of the requirements engineer or business analyst is to identify areas of commonalities and areas of conflict or inconsistency. Here's a guide to making the first set of questions. Most of the time, this is the challenging part of my um, CMSC 128 students when they start collecting requirements. My advice is that you should keep an open mind while interviewing the stakeholders. We tend to be technically biases that we fail to see the bigger picture of it. Understanding the user requirements entail that we, as practitioners or software engineers, acknowledge that we don't know anything about the problem area and actively listen to the users. We must set aside our own versions of the truth. One way to do is to ask first questions. These questions let us know who needs it and if it should be built in our system. First, we have who is behind the request. It is also our job to know or identify who is the person or the people requested for it. Next, who will use the solution? Again, we need to know who is our direct user. Next, what is, the econ uh, what is the benefit of this solution? We also need to identify who can benefit most of the solution. For example, the accountants or any other stakeholders. Lastly, is there another source for the solution? Of course, so that if we can link it, it is better because it can save time, effort, and money. Aside from that questions, we also have what we call follow-up questions. The set of questions focuses on the problem itself. First, what is considered a good output? Determining what is good and appropriate solutions for the problem. Next, what problems will this solution solve? We need to enumerate all the problems being solved with the proposed solution. Next, what business environment will this solution be used? On each department or oh sorry, on which department or group of people who will use the solution? And lastly, are there any special performance issues or constraints we should be uh, you should be aware of? Again, we need to get all the data we need so that we can determine this.